everybody, thanks for joining me today. My name is Marissa and today we're going to learn about fairies and the magical creatures that live right outside our doors. So we're going to start off with a story and then we'll head outside and see what we can find and maybe even build a fairy house of our own. So our story today is Fairy Houses by Tracy Kane. This summer, my parents decided we should leave the city and spend a week on a small island off the coast of Maine. They said there was something special for me on the island, something I would really like, but they wouldn't tell me what it was until we got there. What do you all think it is? As soon as we got off the boat, I tried to guess. Is it the lighthouse? Those silly sandpipers on the beach? The seals? Our cottage? Later, we went for a walk in the woods by our cottage, and I discovered the secret my parents had been hiding. Fairy houses! People had built small houses for fairies to live in. Let's see how many we can count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine fairy houses. I asked if I could build a fairy house. My dad said yes, as long as I followed the rules of the woods. I scouted out places that would be just right for a fairy house. I chose a hollow at the base of an oak tree and collected some twigs, some leaves, and pieces of bark to build with. I finished the inside with a floor of dry grass and made a roof with fallen leaves. I hoped the fairies would choose my house for a place to live in. The next morning, I couldn't wait to visit the woods again to see if anyone might be sleeping inside my house. When I bent down to look, I heard chirping. Was it a fairy snoring? What do you think? Hey, you're not a fairy, I said. You're a cricket. The cricket hopped off into a bush full of bright red berries. Maybe the fairies would like some to eat, I thought. I gathered a handful of berries from the ground and sprinkled them around my house. The following day, after visiting the lighthouse with my parents, I decided to check back on my fairy house. Do you think there are fairies in there now? A pair of finches were carrying the last berries away in their beaks. Searching the ground for more berries, I came to a small stream. The sound of trickling water gave me an idea. I took some stones from my pack that I had found near the lighthouse and arranged them in a circle near my fairy house. Then I filled the circle with water from the stream in case the fairies got thirsty or wanted to take a bath. There's those finches carrying away all the berries. Is anybody here? I whispered the next day. What do you think? At first, the house looked empty. Then I spied someone in the pool. What is this? He said a frog. You are correct. I wanted to get closer look at the frog as he bathed. Oops, I guess I got too close. Jumped away. As the frog leaped away, I could hear other frogs singing out to him. I started singing myself as I got to work collecting acorns and pine cones. It was time to make some home improvements. Uh-oh, looks like we have another visitor. When I came back the next afternoon, I saw a squirrel nibbling on the nuts, but no fairies in sight. I just couldn't give up. I still hoped the fairies would visit my house. Maybe it needed a better entrance. In my pack were seashells and feathers my mom and I had found at the beach. I decorated the path leading up to the door. I thought about adding my shiny bracelet to one of the shells, hoping to catch a fairy's attention. But then I remembered the rules of the woods. Only use natural materials. The next morning, I got up very early when my parents were still asleep and tiptoed out of our cottage and into the woods. This was the day we would be leaving the island, so I had one last chance to visit my fairy house. What do you think will happen now? A fog had rolled in off of the ocean, covering the woods like a thick blanket. I could barely see it was like walking in a cloud. The trees seemed huge and their branches looked like arms stretching out to grab me. Goosebumps started popping up on my arms and legs. Someone was watching me, I was sure. Should I turn around and run? But my fairy house was so close. 
It was then I heard footsteps and saw a large, dark shape moving toward my fairy house. My heart started thumping. I jumped behind a tree to hide. Oh my goodness. I caught my breath. It was only a deer licking the salty seashells. I stood perfectly still as she made her way lazily through the woods, then vanished into the mist. Phew, that was close. Exhausted, I sat down near my fairy house, watching, waiting, and wishing for fairies to appear. The quiet of the woods and the soft mist made me sleepy. My eyelids felt heavy, but I tried not to fall asleep. Before long, the sun started breaking through the mist, and with it came a soft breeze. Kristen, the breeze seemed to whisper in my ear. Kristen, wake up. We can only stay a moment. Struggling to open my eyes, I saw a bright beam of light and a tiny smiling face. Who is it? We are the fairies who live in the spirits of all the plants and animals in these woods, a voice said. Of all the houses here, the animals have chosen yours to visit. You have treated the woods with care and respect. Look quickly, Kristen. For this is a moment of magic when the fairies will show themselves as a way of thanking you. Wow, look at all the fairies. How many can you count? As the late morning sun started breaking through the mist, light beams illuminated the fairies. They sparkled like jewels. They became so bright, I had to close my eyes. When I opened my eyes, the fairies had changed into beautiful monarch butterflies. <gasps> Look at them all. Butterflies fluttered around me like a great orange cloud, following me to the edge of the woods where the sun shone brightly. What color is the monarch butterfly? Yeah, I see orange and black and a little bit of white on their wings. I watched them dancing towards the light, higher and higher. Squinting into the warm golden day, I smiled and waved as the last butterfly disappeared into the sky. The end. Thanks for listening, everyone. So join me next. We are gonna head off into the woods and we are gonna build some fairy houses of our own. The first step to creating a fairy house outdoors is to think about the magical being that's going to live there. You could create a fairy or a gnome or an elf or any other sort of magical creature. I chose to create a fairy. Her name is Fern and she lives in the forest. What will you create? So we are here at Boynton Park in Worcester, Massachusetts, and we are going to work together here to build our fairy houses. So I'm going to enlist the help of Rico and Yahtzee over here to be my co-builders. And before you start to build, there are a couple rules that you need to know. Number one is leave no trace. So you don't want to disturb anything in nature and you don't want to pick anything that's growing. So I like to use materials that are on the ground already, like sticks and leaves and rocks. Rule number two is to use only natural materials. Fairies live in nature, so you don't want to use things that you might not normally find outside. So we're going to go explore our space and find a place to build and then search for some materials. Stay tuned. The thing that you want to do is find a space where you can build. I think I'm going to choose this nice little area by the stream and you want to start to search for materials that you can use. So I like to pick up anything I find interesting on the ground. You can use things like sticks, moss, acorn caps are some of my favorites. Bark is great for making a roof and any sort of fallen material on the ground. Also great, great to build with. So I'm going to look around and see what I can find. And then in a few minutes, I will show you my finished product. So Yatsi here has helped me finish my fairy house. 
even though he just stole a stick from it. But let's go check out the finished product. So you can see it's nice and small, perfect fairy size. We have some sticks for the outside and we have a nice little awning to give them some shade. And then right in their front porch, we have a nice little patio where they can sit and have some tea. We're using those little acorn caps for tea mugs. And if you look outside in their backyard, they have a beautiful view of the stream. So Yatsi and I, thank you for joining us today and we hope that you had fun making fairy houses with us. Now, remember, fairy houses can be anywhere. They don't have to be in the woods like where we are now. If you live in the city, you can go out and build one right there on the sidewalk. You can build one by the beach or you can build one right in your own backyard. Yatsi, can you say bye? Let's go.